Hi guys, it's me, Terry of the Yarn Joy Podcast. Welcome to Vlogtober Day 22. <laughs> okay, so for my mini project today, still following along with Laura over at Happy Berry Crochet here on YouTube. Okay, so this was a little more labor intensive. It took me a while to put it together, but um, it's for somebody special, and so I wanted to go ahead and do it so or see if I could do it and make it look pretty good <laughs> okay so I did the little Elsa doll or as she called the very cold sister doll one of the sister duos I don't know something like that but anyway you know it is of course the supposed to be inspired from the movie Frozen okay so I think he, she turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm not really great on little tiny faces, as you can see. <laughs> I think hers just had eyes and not um, a mouth. But um, I wanted to try to give her a smile. So I think I think she turned out pretty good anyway. I hope. <laughs> um, and she does have legs now there is an option if you didn't want to do the legs that she tells you there's a kind of an easier option where you could do it without the legs and just continue on with the skirt but I thought well I'll just follow along with her and try to get it done so I went ahead and did it <laughs> okay so here is my project and I did use baby yarn um, this is like DK weight similar I suppose um, yeah uh, the hair I actually had this very old retro sparkly um, I have a blue and it's like this one right here it's if you see sparkles in it but it's very old not very old but I mean had a while it kind of a vintage brand I suppose don't even know what it is no wrappers but it's it's the one that's got the little tiny sparkly satin thread that goes through it. I don't know if you can see the sparklies. But anyway, I had some in white and so I decided to use that for her hair to make it look a little more icy or frosty looking. So that's my project for today. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the trivia questions. Okay, so yesterday's trivia questions, number one, was true or false Henry Fonda and Katherine Hepburn appeared in the opening of the credits of Newhart and that was true it says the opening credits are actually outtakes from the movie on Golden Pond at one point during the opening credit credits you can clearly see Fonda and Hepburn in the car Wow, I didn't know that. I'll have to look it up and see if I can find it on here on YouTube or something and see if I can find that. Okay, which actor stars as Detective James Crockett in Miami Vice? Was it A, Mickey Rourke, B, Don Johnson, C, Nick Nolte, or D, Jeff Bridges? And, of course, that was B, Don Johnson. Although Rourke... Nolte and Bridges were all considered for the part. Ultimately, it went to Don Johnson. The actor has also starred on the hit show Nash Bridges and in movies like Tin Cup, The Other Woman, and Django Unchained. Okay, and the third one from yesterday was... What was golfer Arnold Palmer's nickname? Was it A, the Golden Bear, B, the Great White Shark, C, the Hawk, or D, the King? And, of course, that was D, the King. The most popular golfer of all time, Arnie, is known by millions of fans, dubbed Arnie's Armies, Army, <laughs> simply as the King. Okay, so questions for today. Number one... To protect it, a film's secrets, production productions sometimes use a fake working title. Which of the following films went under the fake working title Blue Harvest? Was it A, Superman 2, B, Return of the Jedi, C, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, or D, The Abyss? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Number two for today, which book uses exactly 50 different words? Okay? <laughs> okay, and then number three for today, true or false? In the original script for E.T. the Extraterrestrial, in the original script, the adorable, the adorable alien dies. So, come back tomorrow and we'll find the answer, or find out the answers. Okay, so next section for today is the Q&A section. Still answering questions that you have given me in the comments that you've left me um, under my videos. I appreciate it and keep the questions coming. We have a few more days of Vlogtober to get through, okay? <laughs> okay, Karen asked me, what crochet project are you looking forward to the most once Vlogtober is over as you ha will have finished the little amigurumis or the mini projects and the preemie hats? Uh, well, probably getting back to the ones that I wor was working on and I, I think getting Christmas presents started. Um, last year I was real good about working on Christmas presents through the year and so by this time last year I had quite a few already fixed and ready to be given or you know made. Um, this year no. <laughs> uh, I've got the deer blanket I'm working on and I haven't even, I haven't finished it yet so I really need to get back on to that um, and then also um, just look at See if I I, I kind of made a list of things I wanted to give as Christmas gifts, and so I need to revisit that and um, see what I feel like I can get done. <laughs> so yeah, I guess Chris, like I said, Christmas gift making. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tina Jeffrey asked me, "Are you able to keep up with your whips during Vlogtober?" Well. <laughs> I am still working on some of them. Uh, a couple of them have kind of taken a nap, <laughs> but uh, I am trying to, especially the the like the Jada. Well, to make sure I have my Jada and Stitches calendar that section uh, caught up, and it is. I'm just waiting for the next video, her next video to come out for the next section, which I'm assuming might be this week. I'm thinking maybe. Um, some of them, like, yeah, I was working on the little gingerbread house Christmas ornament, and I haven't worked on that for a while. But, I, so, I have been keeping up with some of the, some of them, especially, like, the amigurumis that I was needing to do that people were wanting me to do for them. Um, so, I, I have pretty much caught up, kept up with some of them, but, no, some of them are taking a little bit of a nap. So, uh, I need to get back to my whips, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, and then Chris Lyle asked me if I could show a nice edge for corner corner blanket. Um, well, um, oh, it's, uh, sorry, Chris Lyle is the channel name, but her, her name is Roz. Yeah. Okay. So there are quite a few here on YouTube, uh, tutorials. You just d do a search for uh, borders for corner to corner or C to C crochet blankets and I did find quite a few uh, I will link below one of them that I especially like and I watched and, and it's by Joanna Martinez and it's called C to C border three ways and she shows you three different patterns that you could use to apply a, board, a border onto your corner to corner projects but like I said there are some other ones that are listed you just put in a search and you, you get quite a few you'll have their shell borders there's a block stitch border uh, there's quite a few uh, border patterns that I've seen just by searching for that so but I will put a link in that for the one in the description box below for the uh, one by Joanna Martinez okay so that can give you an idea okay um, Ellen Wilson asked me, do you use the invisible decrease when making amigurumi? Uh, yes, I do. Um, before, I would just do like a sing the single crochet two together type stitch, just the basic. And um, it, it leaves uh, a little bulge, like, like it's an extra thicker stitch because you have that other loop in there. And it always left, you could de definitely could see where that stitch was. And so this, the invisible decrease helps so much making it a much smoother edge. You can't even see, you can't even see it. Um, so yes, I use that all the time. <laughs> uh, it's a great stitch, yes. 
So one last question, Crystal from Chronically Crocheting asked me, what is the most you've spent on a skein of yarn and what was it? Um, the majority of the stuff that I buy is acrylic and acrylic yarns mainly some cottons but it's for charity type uh, crocheting or for amigurumi so I do not normally spend a whole lot you know I mean it's like four or five dollars for a skein of yarn maybe uh, if you buy the big jumbos it might be seven up to ten if it's a pound of love although I always try to get it on sale and with coupons <laughs> but I have spent a little more on a few things like um, I did buy a cotton flowers cake yarn. It was a yarn. It's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to remember. Red Heart makes it now. It's it, I can't remember what it's called, but it's got the three tiny threads that are like uh, held together. And each one, when it, it's like a gradient yarn, and each one, not really a yarn, it's almost like more thread. It's very tiny, like I think together it might be a number two weight or lace weight or something. Uh, but I bought this yarn, I ordered it, and it, because um, my family, or my husband's family, and, and a lot of my nationality is has German roots to it and so this cotton I think it was called cotton flowers yarn and um, I had seen it on another YouTube channel and so I ordered it and it was a big cake about so big and I made a um, shawl out of it and the pr the pattern that I used was German and then so this this cotton flowers it, it was a 50% acrylic 50 50 percent cotton blend a gradient type yarn or yeah, yarn. I guess yarn. <laughs> um, and I made a shawl out of it. It was this one. It's a cotton acrylic shawl um, blend, 50-50. And it is this um, pattern that I made. Very lacy. Um, and like I said, it is cotton cotton blend, so it's very light and cool. Uh, anyway, I think I spent... I spent like $25 I think on this and it was a very large cake of it though um, that was probably the most expensive thing that I bought uh, as far as a cake or skein of yarn yeah <laughs> but not normally normally it's it's the acrylics and the stuff that don't that do not cost that much okay so thanks for coming by and visiting today on day uh, vlogtober day 22 and please come by stop by tomorrow and visit for vlogtober 23 see you later guys bye